Hello everyone and welcome back to another StarCraft 2 video. This time, as you might be able to tell, I am indeed playing as Terran. I am still learning the, the ins, the outs, the, the many complexities of continuous um, production as a Terran player. We've just got to keep it flowing and uh, keep it caught up. And my opponent, as you just saw very quickly, is indeed playing as Zerg and his name is Mad Cat. And the real question is, is he in any way related to the now bankrupt company that used to make controllers for fighting games? I do not know. Somehow, I, I doubt it, but maybe, maybe. Maybe this is my sole encounter with fame. So, yeah, he's playing as Zerg, and I'm playing as Terran. And he forces me to do something very, very silly indeed, <laughs> as you will very surely see. So I am, by the way, playing the Brood War music in the background. This is an option you can select in the sound section of the options menu. The very, very detailed StarCraft 2 options menu. And um, yeah, it's actually better than the StarCraft 2 music. It's just really nice, nice 90s gaming kind of music. It's really, really good to listen to. But what's cool about this game? Well, things kind of got crazy quite early on. It's a bit of an aggressive match. So I'm going to speed it up just a little bit. Um, you can see he scouts with a drone quite early on. Um, I get suspicious, so I send like an SCV to follow him. And, um, you know, I assume he's just scouting and not doing anything really. So I bring back my other SCV, get my gas as per usual. And then he tries to make a hatchery. Um, I saw him go up to, into this corner and I was like, why would you scout up there at this early of a timing? Um, and then he does that. And I freak the hell out. <laughs> so I pull all my SCVs. Um, I feel like this was the right response. As you will see shortly, they do quite well when they all get to attack a, uh, a hatchery that's, you know, only just started building. So he cancels. I don't realize that his probe, not his probe, his drone is still there. So I pull everything back again to take care of it. And meanwhile, um, he's doing whatever he wants and I'm just freaking all, all held out and you can see I actually he doesn't cancel it so I don't have to take care of the um, take care of the drone but if he had cancelled it that could have gotten messy as all my SCVs would have been kind of distracted with uh, drone arrest I guess um, <laughs> something <laughs> it was crazy I've literally just finished this match and um, I figured I'd slap on record because I'm still pretty hyped about it so I was like, you know what, I'm not going to go for a Reaper because I'm not going to go across his side of the map. It looks like he's trying to cheese me, so I'm literally just going to make Marines, have them scout the edges of my base, look out for drop overlords and other such cheese eye. Um, so yeah, turns out he actually went for a fairly standard uh, just hatchery expansion. Um, let's just see what he's making. So what has he got? He's making a queen. Okay, so he's playing perfectly standard from this point on. But that hatchery, if he'd managed to build it, why I was so terrified was because as soon as the hatchery starts spreading creep, so if he'd made it there, the creep would have, you know, very quickly gone to around here, here, and here, and then he could have made a spine crawler and started more or less moving the spine crawler up to attack my main base. Of course, as Terran, you don't have to worry too much about that, but even so, um, I was pretty damn terrified. Of course, I always have the option, why, why I say I don't have to worry too much, is that I can always lift off my buildings. But even so, it's pretty damn terrifying. Like, if you're Protoss, that's, that is an, a very legitimate strat to beat you, in terms of cheesies. Um, so, I kind of overreacted. My recent playing of Protoss probably caused me to react slightly a bit too crazy. But regardless, we dealt with it, we're moving on with our lives, and... Um, for the longest time, I thought I was sort of stabilized. I thought I was okay. You know, I've got these Marines kind of on patrol duty, uh, just checking for overlords and other such shenaniganry. And it's not for a while that I realized that I've just completely accidentally skipped um, the one of the parts of this build, which is get a second uh, command center before you get your second barracks, before you get your factory, before you get your starport. Um, basically, it's one of the first bits of the build and I completely skipped it because I was freaking out so at this point um, <laughs> at some point I do realize to be fair and unfortunately my scouting this game is non-existent and I am working on that my reaper play is actually getting better I'm getting better at sort of 
pulling back the Reaper so it survives for a second later, kind of dart in and see what he's making near the kind of first, second base type thing. So scouting is improving, and just the game previous to this, I was actually using these scans quite well, I felt. So uh, aspects of my Terran play are definitely getting better, I feel. So I'm still going for my standard. Um, it's around this point where I realize that this so-called standard build that I'm doing is really missing something quite crucial. You know, the expansion. And if I'd had that, if I was building that any time around now, um, I probably would have played a very normal game. I would have expanded to here, walled off around here, because we've got these nice juicy rocks to protect us. And yeah, played it quite chill. But I realized, and I immediately slapped down the engineering bay, and I'm like, okay, we're gonna go for a one base, just all in, take them out, finish the game. He forced my hand because of that, you know, stupid hatchery play. <laughs> so um, he forced my hand in making me make a mistake. And now I'm going to capitalize on my own mistake to win the match. He will never expect this. At least that was my theory. So he's going by double evolution uh, chamber. For some weird reason, he was going into um, ground missile attack, even though he wasn't going into roaches, which was a little, a little odd. Like if you're going zergling like Ling Bane, something like that, I imagine it's better off to go for the melee upgrade instead of instead of the ranged, but you know what, maybe he had plans down the line. Um, maybe he was going to go like Hydras or something, I'm not too sure. But regardless, you can see I'm just stacking up Marines, constantly building Marines, and um, I more or less stop making SUVs after a certain point. I max out this base, and then I'm just like, okay, all of my, all of my minerals, all of my gas are going to go into making, attacking violent units of death. And I go for double engineering bay on one base. I've already nearly got my um, plus one ground attack, and I'm getting my armory for plus two. Essentially, you know, it's past, it's way past five minutes. If I don't kill him soon, the fact that I haven't expanded yet is gonna kill me. So I have to go and kill him. So I load up three medi medivacs um, with marines, and I think just one mine, and I, I try and remember to keep on producing stuff. I don't do it particularly well. I could have been making like a siege tank or something or just adding on an extra thing, and um, yeah, I, I add on mules, I sort of get that all set up, make some more marines. The production bar is up on the top left, but um, if we take a look at upgrades, you can see I'm sort of very violently ahead of him. Um, he's got armor plus one and ling speed, and I've got plus one ground, shields, and stim, and three medivacs. So these are basically the most godly um, early marines you're ever going to see. So I drop on the edge of creep. I don't think he notices. We check his vision. Yeah, he definitely has vision of this. So um, I take out a queen, take out the spawning ball, removing his ability to make more zerglings and banelings and pretty much anything until he re rebuilt it. And I just about split last minute against um, those banelings that came in. So I dart into the mineral line. I accidentally load up a medivac and I'm just like, you know, I've got to kill this guy. Um, the drones come back in for some reason, but, you know, I remember to stim again. I destroy his stuff. And if we take a look at the supply difference, um, he's still way ahead in terms of workers. But that's because he had all workers. If we look at the army supply difference, um, it's 1441. I'm way ahead. And I'm sniping key buildings. I take out the spire, the spawning pool, and all of his workers in his main starting base. Now he has a few muters, but I'm able to snipe those with stim and plus one. And now I've got plus one ground armor. And yeah, basically this was the coolest Terran game I've played to date. And um, it was very sloppy, I will admit. Lots of mistakes. I forget my build completely because I was freaking out. I mean, you could argue that that was a correct response. You know, you delayed a ton by those aggressive hatchery plays early on, the attempted cheeses, and so you just switch gears and go one base all in for some reason. But you know what? I've got the strangest feeling that that's not the correct response. Um, I'm fairly sure you do what you can to deal with a hatchery, and then you kind of back off and play a normal game from there as best you can. So. In the perfect world, I would have expanded. Um, as you can see, he was playing for a fairly normal game there. But uh, yeah, I go for a one base all in, get a massive army relative to his, um, and basically kick his ass before he could kick mine with his massive economy on the back line. 
I mean, you can still see, even though I wiped all of the drones on the uh, first base, his main base, he still had 22 workers. That's nearly as many workers as I had at that moment. So if I'd waited just another couple of minutes, there's a chance that he would have made a bigger army off of the back of his economy. So yeah, this was a super fun game. Um, just thought I'd show you guys the entertaining match that I just had. And uh, yeah, hopefully I will be continuing to learn Terran. They're really fun, actually. Um, probably... I would say they're more fun than Protoss to play. I'm not sure about Zerg, though. Zerg's quite fun to play as well, though. Um, I don't know. It's a toss-up at the moment. As I mentioned in a previous video, I'm probably going to aim to get good enough with all the three races and then just go into random for, ver you know, just variation and variety's sake. And also kind of different content. But, um, yeah, Terran is super fun. And mechanically challenging, I would actually say that it's the hardest race in terms of macro. You can't just burst make out a whole bunch of um, like adepts through warp -ins. You can't just go remax your entire army with all of your lava as Zerg. You have to continuously make stuff. And when I attacked, you can actually see in the bottom left, um, I was floating a ton of resources that I really should have been spending. Now, let me just check if... No, it doesn't actually... Actually, we can go in the game. Production, yes. So you see, um, I wasn't actually building anything, which is quite bad. But fortunately, I've taken out... I've completely demolished his main base. I've taken out his spawning pool. He wasn't rebuilding it yet, I don't think. No, he wasn't rebuilding it yet. Um, and I've taken out his spire, so... Basically, I'd removed his entire capability of defending without... You know, without just making a ton of queens. And he can't make queens that quickly, so... Yeah, I had completely won the game, no doubt about it. Um, it was a legitimate GG, but at the same time, I was definitely not remembering my macro lessons that my days playing Terran have instilled into me. So as always, guys, hope this was rather entertaining. I definitely found it to be so when I was playing, just uh, literally just 10 minutes ago, actually. And I hope you tune in for the next StarCraft 2 video. Peace.